until long enough for us to get off the get off the ground. Standard picture of us uh, going out to the vehicle. It was kind of odd to uh, be up that time of the day. It was pretty easy for us, but uh, Carl Mead, uh, Gene Trin, and Ellen Baker had had the sleep shift almost 12 hours, and they had just about that point uh, they were about ready to go to bed, even though we were just getting up. Ken, you want to describe the launch? Well, uh, the launch was quite a ride for me. I, I, when the engines lit, uh, I didn't get too excited, but I did look over to the left to see what the gantry looked like, and I noticed that it started glowing before we started moving as we got the reflections of the engines and the SRBs. Then uh, it slowly moved out of the, out of the way. The, uh, the liftoff sensation felt just like we get in a simulator. I was very pleased with the uh, training that we'd had and felt very comfortable during the launch. I know the biggest impression I get on any launch is uh, the bright lights. Um, you can see a little bit of that here during the roll program maneuver. And unfortunately for our guests down at the Cape, we, we disappeared into the clouds pretty soon after liftoff, so they didn't get to see, uh, see us all the way out to Miko. But I can assure you the ride was very comfortable and very smooth, and uh, the engines and SRBs worked just as advertised. Once we got up on orbit, this is a close-up of the uh, drop physics module with the bay one door open. You can see some of the instrumentation inside, and this is a live shot, uh, almost live shot of a drop deployment. And this is a very successful deployment. And thank you, Carl, for taking a picture of that. <laughs> the drop physics module was controlled through the IVA that you see. That's a second CRT on the right. And this is a. Uh, we got a chance to uh, do uh, food operations, as I would call them. And uh, everybody uh, would try to come up with some new uh, stunts to outdo the next person uh, with uh, rotating spoons or uh, floating uh, meatballs or whatever Ken is trying to grapple yes. with. It. <laughs> Grooming was always very important, and uh, I found myself using for the first time electric razor. And. Uh, and the sleeping quarters were very, very adequate, and I found myself sleeping quite a bit. And, of course, uh, when you wake up in the morning, you have to find your way out. Sometimes they didn't want me to get out of there and put the ergometer right in front of it, but that didn't deter me. <laughs> this was our first, my first flight with these sleep stations, and it was a nice, quiet place to go to give you a little privacy for two weeks. And in a can of I believe this is Dick and I uh, preparing for FCS checkout getting all the systems ready for deorbit. Helen was right in there helping out. and uh, It was a three-person three operation. I wish I could describe to you what I'm seeing out my window here, but it's, you can see that burnt orange down uh, the filling up the window, and then you see a very bright white light there just to the right. That's actually a blue, thin blue band caused by sunrise, and there was a big orange glow on top of that. There was. Uh, I wish I could have had time to get the camcorder with a big wide-angle lens over. We, uh, as I say, it was a beautiful day in Florida. It was pilot's kind of day. Uh, acquired the runway uh, way out. Uh, we had a new capability here. With a, we added some extra speed to the orbiter to get us further down the runway. Uh, this is the first flight of that. Also, the first flight of the, some new tires uh, that uh, that uh, are more resistant to uh, damage on rough runways, particularly like the one we have at the Kennedy Space Center. Touchdown seemed to me to be very smooth, and uh, at no time did I feel like I was uh, really behind the uh, vehicle. We had we intentionally uh, delayed derotation of the nose gear by about 10 knots due, due to our weight. Got that down on the uh, runway, and immediately Ken uh, deployed the uh, drag chute. Throughout the uh, rollout sequence, the winds were very light, and uh, I felt uh, very uh, very similar to the way I felt in my uh, previous four-day flight of. Uh, uh, a very solid vehicle, very tightly controlled, and uh, absolutely no problems. At 60 knots, uh, in order to keep the drag chute from being entangled in the drag chute, we intentionally jettisoned uh, the chute, and then uh, finally a roll to a stop uh, with uh, using up about 13,000 feet of the 15,000 feet of uh, runway we had there. Uh, this isn't cooling fans for us. This is to blow the ga any gases that might be out, the harmful gases, away from the uh, vehicle. But uh, very quickly, Ken and I were able to get out and do an inspection of the vehicle, and everything looked great to us.
all in all, two weeks in space well spent. I couldn't ask for anything more out of my vehicle or, or my crew.